a very warm welcome to this service of Holy Communion on this second Sunday of Epiphany. Sadly, of course, we cannot gather together corporately, but I hope you will be able to gain access to this service through YouTube and through my what will become weekly email between now and uh, the beginning of Lent in the very real hope that we can once again gather back here then uh, in St Mary's. This weekend always focuses readings on the call of Jesus and this year the second Sunday of Epiphany also falls on the 17th of January, the day on which the Church of England commemorates Bishop Charles Gore. Gore was a schoolboy at Harrow School and he writes of coming to St Mary's to receive communion. I will be making reference to that in my short reflections at the end of the readings. And on this occasion we will be hearing all three readings set for the Sunday, from the Old Testament, from the first book of Samuel, from the book of Revelation, and from the Gospel according to St John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. If you are following the order of service, you will find links to our hymns, and our opening hymn today is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, number 332 in the English Hymnal. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought and in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this second Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is written in the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. 
At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly, because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are following the order of service, the gradual hymn is Bright the Vision That Delighted. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations, and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything come good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, the 17th of January, the Church of England commemorates Charles Gore, an old Herodian, a boy who went to Harrow School. And he identifies an incident while he was at Harrow as the moment he made a crucial decision about his future. In 1868, Charles Gore, aged 15, was listening to a sermon by a maths master of the time, the Reverend Brooke Foss Westcott, who went on to become one of the most famous and socially engaged bishops of Durham. He was preaching on what he called the disciplined life, taking St Benedict, St Francis and St Ignatius Loyola as examples of that life. Each had founded religious communities which exist to this day, the Benedictines, the Franciscans and the Jesuits. The young Gore, listening to that sermon, heard that call and the community of the Resurrection, a community of Anglican monks, was founded 24 years later in 1892. I spent time living with that community in my own preparation for priesthood. Little did I realise at the time that I would then spend the greater part of my ministry in the school at which Charles Gore was educated and indeed heard the call to found the community. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Gore would, as a schoolboy, attend St Mary's to receive communion at a period when the school chapel was going through a less sacramental phase. The badge of the community, which you will find on the first page of our Order of Service today, is the res resurrected victorious lamb. The lamb and flag made famous in many, many a pub sign but who is the image at the heart of the heavenly vision in Revelation chapter 5. The Gospel reading for today, the call of Philip and Nathaniel from John's Gospel, comes just after the baptism of Jesus, when John the Baptist has identified Jesus as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. It ends 
that is, this morning's Gospel passage, ends with the enigmatic words of Jesus, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels, angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus is indeed the way to the heart of heaven, where the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fall down before the Lamb, who is himself the symbol of the crucified and risen Lord. The passage from Revelation today is theologically crucial. It comes from a time of crisis, probably the persecution of the church by the Emperor Nero. But whatever brings about the crisis, the questions of salvation are to the fore. Pandemic, similarly, raises existential questions. Who can save us? What does all this mean? Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? Meaning, who can bring salvation? The answer to which is, indeed, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the one we now know to be Messiah. The one who, as the Lamb, has offered himself in sacrifice, standing as if it had been slaughtered. At the heart of heaven is the one who has won our salvation and equips us with the faith, hope and love to be builders of his kingdom. A task to which we are all called in those clear yet deeply challenging words, follow me. In a real sense, to have heard and responded to that call makes one a member of the community of the resurrection, the Easter people, which of course is the whole church. Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Those words are addressed to you and me. Amen. In our prayers today, we pray for the community of the resurrection, now in Murfield, West Yorkshire. We pray for the Theological Co College associated with it, the College of the Resurrection. Closer to home, we continue to pray for those on our sick list. Maggie Bishop, Alan Carter, Paul Campbell, Fina Garcia, Mavis G, Betsy Griffin, John Lampitt, Rita McAleer, Mary Pragnall, Jamie Shaw, Tim Smith, Jean and Peter Waddell, George Williams, Christopher Bennett, Christine Bedner, Ellen Biskey. And at this time we continue to pray for the soul of Leslie Dock, whose funeral will take place on the 25th of January, and for Douglas in his bereavement. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And if you are following the order of service, the offertory hymn today 
number 271 in English hymnal. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the Word a new light has dawned upon the world, that all the nations may be brought out of darkness to see the radiance of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our pra praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. an act of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn today, number 352 in English hymnal, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown Him with Many Crowns. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and for evermore. Amen.